I literally don't give anything else. She said, I hate you so much, I'll wear red to your wedding. So here we have another uh, suitable candidate. It's exactly the same thing as the one illustrated in the picture. Well, close, close approximation anyway. I have several of these. These are heaters from the 1920s, 1930s. You can find them at flea markets and things. Not uh, too terribly expensive, maybe $30, which is kind of a lot of money, but they're really such a beautiful article that I think they're well worth it. I hate to destroy it, but um, and I'm really not destroying it, but... I'm just repurposing it. First thing to do is to strip it down and uh, that involves the removal of this cover which of course protected uh, little hands and feet and arms and usually it's just a matter of a couple of strips and uh, it should pop out fairly easily And what you do with it afterwards, of course, is your business. It's probably solid copper, but uh, it's uh, nice. Maybe you can make a salad bowl or a fruit bowl out of it or something. Anyway, we'll just put that aside. Oops. The next thing to do, of course, is to remove everything that is extant in the uh, device. That includes the coil. Don't throw this away. These are really useful, especially for people who still use these devices. Um, and it's just an interesting object all on its own. And undo the uh, ceramic connector here. And this, that just holds this back piece on. And uh, this one is held on by uh, some sort of flange. It just comes away with a, by undoing a couple of screws. We'll hang on to this ceramic. Don't throw anything away. These things are all useful. And there's a little flange here. I'll just remove that. These all may be slightly different, but uh, you can figure it out. It's not uh, too terribly difficult. It's not too terribly difficult to remove these things. Take this out. We have a hollow shell now, which is um, perfect for repurposing and creating a steampunk webcam. You can see the uh, rear and the front. Let's get our parts and uh, start doing it. So what I've done, uh, rather than build a complete new one, I've taken the old one apart, and just so you can see the parts as they go together. So this is really a, a $5 lens. It's a very old lens. It could cost more. It could cost $25 now. You can get them on old cameras, usually the bellows type of, uh, of still picture cameras from the 1930s. They're very nice lenses, very pretty, and uh, some of them still have working shutters. And this is a part of an old lamp and uh, it was just being discarded. It's brass and it's pretty nice and I think I have four of them because there were four on the lamp. Inside I have a disassembled webcam. All I did was take off the outer shell and save the circuit board and maybe the plug and the switch and this one happens to have a uh, microphone and I think I've disconnected it. And uh, what was necessary to do was attach the lens to the brass bell and then find the appropriate focal point or the distance from the lens for this camera. And um, it's just trial and error, moving it, moving it back, back and forward until you get it just right. You can hook that up to your computer just to see where the sweet spot is, so to speak. And then I took a glue gun and put lots of hot glue in and set it in place. And so I waited for the glue to dry. That's about it. Now let's just see how we put it back all back together. So we're just going to take our lens, our newly created lens. We're going to feed the wires through the hole we created. Well, the hole that was already there. And depending on the type of model you have, you just have to figure out how to fasten it into the shell. Uh, this one had a couple of little wires that just hold it in through a couple of tiny little holes. You probably can't see them on the side here. Uh, went through to the back and uh, fastened with small screws. And I'm just going to put that back together because you're obviously going to have to figure out how to do it with your own material. But that's basically it. So now we have the lens in place and it's uh, functioning and um, 
uh, it's accessible should you want to change it in the future. Uh, maybe the driver will be, maybe the driver for your camera changes or you change an operating system. You can just simply pull the old camera out and throw a new camera in. So now the uh, lens and a holder on camera are all fastened in and held securely. It's probably a good idea to take a glue gun and glue the original casing into your uh, device just to secure it and so the wire doesn't get pulled accidentally and uh, disconnect from the camera. Probably save yourself a lot of grief. I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, well that seems to be glued in securely now in the back and uh, we're going to take a few items that I've collected up. It, the, the trick with all of this of course is to find interesting objects to attach to your uh, your work and uh, I happen to have this beautiful old switch from a piece of test equipment probably from the 1940s that era I think it was made in uh, the northeastern United States somewhere. It was, anyway, it's very pretty. I, I attached the reader from a hard drive to the front just to embellish it just a little bit more. I drilled a hole and I'm going to attach it with a screw. That should do it. Sure, I have a piece of uh, copper pipe which uh, I had lying around and uh, there happens to be on the edge of this uh, lens just a little spot where where this will fit perfectly right there I had to bend and shape this copper pipe to fit somewhere and attach to the switch and to the lens and so just playing with it a little bit I found and bending it back and forth I found that this sort of works nicely and it looks okay too. And it seems to be uh, holding itself there pretty nicely. And uh, I don't think I'm even going to have to solder it. I could wire it in just so it doesn't fall out. But uh, that's basically it. I decided not to use the uh, microphone in the webcam, so what I am using is uh, something I rebuilt. This is a telephone operator's uh, headset, probably from the 1940s again. It's Bakelite plastic, and I stripped out its, I gutted it, and uh, took uh, new headphones and a microphone, I took that apart and re-threaded it into this piece of equipment. So it's pretty well traditional. It's not certainly of the period, of not Victorian, but uh, it has the look that I, I liked. To affix it, I use this uh, electrical clamp. So there won't be a, a physical connection. It just is spring-loaded and clamps onto the side. And uh, I can hang the uh, headphone on the side like this so it's very convenient and always plugged in and ready to go. And that's it. Well, what do you think? Mm, I guess it's okay. I'd rather see something in a nice plastic instead of all this old metal. Well, I like it. It reminds me of bygone days. You remind me of bygone days. What was that? Nothing, nothing. I, I don't know why he has to waste his time making this junk. He could do something useful like fix the toaster or something. You're a robot. You don't eat toast. Well, if he'd fix the toaster, I'd give it a try. Well, you, you, you take my advice. And don't. That stuff will kill you. Toast. Ha! Oh. Ah, lovely copper, lovely. Hmm?